Hey gang, Sally here. Hope you're having an amazing and fascinating day. What's cooking today? We're cooking spaghetti in the Instant Pot with the noodles in the pot along with everything else. Uh, well, let's roll the intro. And of course, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Hit the thumbs up, leave a comment down below. We love to hear from you. And thank you so much for watching. And we'll show you what's going on in just a moment. <music> a little bit messy today. I didn't get all the extraneous stuff off the counter, but we're going to deal with this. So I've got about half a cup of chopped celery. I've got some minced garlic. Our seasonings are going to be about a teaspoon and a third of Himalayan pink rock salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper, uh, somewhere between a quarter and an eighth of it, closer to a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, uh, about a third to a half of curry powder. And what did I forget? Yeah, I think that's all. So that's what we got for seasonings. We're gonna do two cans of tomato sauce and one can of fire roasted red um, tomatoes. We've got some organic grass-fed ground beef here. Got an onion back there in the bag. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. And then when we've got the meat browned and the onions softened, we're gonna throw the spaghetti on top Actually, we're going to mix the seasonings in with the meat and onions first, and then we'll put the spaghetti on top, add the rest of the liquid, which will include these two cans, these three cans, plus two cups of water, and you don't stir it. So I'm going to show you as we go step by step, but I need two hands to get that meat going. All right, so we got the meat in there, and we're going to let that get mostly browned, and then we're going to add in the onions and let them soften. Put about a tablespoon of olive oil in. We're running on the saute setting right now, so this will take a couple minutes. And then, as I said, we'll go ahead and dump the onions in and let them soften up a little bit. Yeah, just like that. You know, here's the thing, guys. Homemade spaghetti sauce is super easy. This is not exactly the normal recipe that I use. It's the normal seasonings that I use. Um, but I actually looked this up. As a nomad, living, you know, here we are out in the middle of the desert, right? Hanging out with some friends right now. Um, I want to conserve my water. And so boiling a big pot of water to make spaghetti just doesn't make good sense to me. That's an incredible waste of water. So I, I, I know that it's possible to do it this way. I've done it for several other things, not spaghetti sauce. So yeah, we're going to try this and uh, save quarts of water and having to clean up a separate pot. So I think that'll be pretty cool. I'm pretty confident this is going to work. And hey, if it doesn't work, then you won't be seeing this video. How about that? That's a thing. All right, this is starting to get going pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and dump the onions in so they've got a chance to soften. This is a uh, a decent size whole onion all chopped up. Some chopping better than others because it was kind of a heel of part of one, but it'll be fine. So yeah, we're going to let this go for a couple of minutes. And then once the onions start to soften up, we'll go ahead and add in the uh, celery and the garlic, put in all our seasonings. And then, yeah, this just becomes one of my favorite things. You just dump stuff on top and put the lid on. And once it comes up to pressure, this only needs about seven minutes to cook. So, pretty cool. All right, let's get that, let that get round up the rest of the way. Okay, I've added the garlic and the celery, and, and now I'm going to go ahead and add all the seasonings and get those incorporated. So normally when I make spaghetti sauce, I use a six ounce can of tomato paste and I mix that with a cup of water. And that makes a great ratio for a nice thick sauce. I think this sauce is actually gonna be thinner than I want. In fact, I think I'm gonna cut down a little bit on the amount of um, water that I'm using because I don't think it needs that much. We'll find out whether I'm right or not. All right, so first up I'm dumping in the diced tomatoes. And again, I've never put diced tomatoes in spaghetti sauce before. Uh, oops. 
And actually, I intended to put the spaghetti in first, so let's get the spaghetti in. And what we've got here are uh, eight ounces broken in half, and you want to kind of scatter them so that they don't clump together. So kind of like this. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the saute off. And I'm kind of making a mess on the counter a little bit. So the basic idea is that you want the pasta to be covered so that it all gets cooked. All right, so here's what we've got. And I'm just going to kind of push these last couple of pieces into the liquid because you do want all of the spaghetti touched by the liquid. And keep in mind, whenever you're working with, you know, tomato sauce in the pressure cooker, you really do not want to mix it in. So we're going to turn it on to pressure cook and we're going to do it for seven minutes. And that'll flip to on in just a moment. And we're using a lot more energy than I thought we were going to to do this. I probably should have done it earlier in the day because it's like 3.30 in the afternoon. And when I walk over here to look at my solar, we're down to 97% and we're pulling 1,012 watts out of the batteries right now and only putting 95 in. But it'll be fine. Okay, so we're going to let that go, and in seven minutes we can do a quick release. Seven minutes after it gets to the countdown. We can do a quick release, uh, check to see if the spaghetti itself is done, and if not, I'm just going to put the lid back on and let it sit there, because it's still going to be hot, and absorb any leftover liquid that didn't get absorbed in the first place. So we'll see how this goes. All right, so here's what we got, guys. I just released the pressure, took the lid off. It's a little looser than I would prefer, but it looks like the spaghetti is actually done. So it's going to be a high ratio of sauce to spaghetti here, but that's okay. So I think when I do this the next time, I'll go back to my regular recipe, and I want to get a taste of this. Um, go back to my regular recipe with the uh, tomato paste and water and then just add more water. That's what I think. But, tastes pretty good. The pasta's done correctly. So that's good. Alright, we're going to dish this up and get some eating. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. special request to talk about dishwashing again and I just realized I'm like halfway through it this morning but I decided to stop and turn on the camera. So here's the method. I've got two spray bottles right here. The one on the left with the gray top has um, normally when they're full has almost completely full of water and about two or three good sized squirts of Dawn dishwashing liquid and then you shake that up you don't even have to shake it most of the time. Uh, and then the one on the right with the uh, teal colored top has about a quarter cup of vinegar to a quart of water. And the method is pretty simple and saves a ton of water. So here's the deal. I take the gray spray bottle first and I spray all of my dishes and my sponge. And then I use my sponge and wash my dishes. Now, I've actually already washed these, so they're just waiting to get rinsed. It's a little bit of a cheat here because I'm holding onto the, uh, onto the camera while I do this. So really, all I have to do is just squirt, squirt, squirt. And this really is two-handed, so I can make sure that everything gets rinsed properly. And usually what I'll do is, like I've got the frying pan here, so I'll wash this and just keep dumping it in the frying pan until I get it clean. And of course, what do we have going on up here? What's going on up here, Mr. Kit? Huh? Do you have Bunny in the seat with you? Do you see people? Should I look? Should I see what's going on? Anyway, back to the dishes. 
So I'm going to go ahead and finish rinsing off all the dishes. And I just put them over here on the drying mats. Like I've already done the silverware. That's all done. And once I get everything washed, I'll turn it upside down on the drying mat. And uh, about 50% of the time I actually dry the dishes. And about 50% of the time I just let them dry themselves. No big deal. What I have found is that typically uh, these two quart bottles will last me at least four days. I usually go through the teal colored rinse liquid more quickly than the soap liquid, which makes sense. And uh, yeah, I just refill them. I do it from the Berkey. And I do that so that I've got water that's been filtered because it keeps the uh, nozzles from gumming up very well, or very much. These are uh, spray bottles from Dollar Tree. So they were a dollar and a quarter. They'd be dollar and a quarter tree now, I guess. So cheap bottles, filtered water, you know, regular stuff, pretty simple, and it saves a ton of water when it comes to doing the dishes. And I have found that the only time I actually heat up water and use hot water is if I've made something like super greasy. And I really need the hot water to help cut the grease. The rest of the time, this is absolutely fine. And of course, my opinion is that in recent decades, we've been way too much about anti-germ this and anti-germ that, and you can't have any dirt. I don't want dirty dishes, but on the other hand, you don't really need hot water. I believe that not being super fastidious about using antimicrobial soap and all of the other stuff has actually helped to strengthen my immune system. So those are my thoughts around dishwashing. Share me uh, your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you think you are, double check to make sure because YouTube has been spontaneously unsubscribing people. And just to give you a really good idea of how much water I use to rinse all of these dishes, all of these dishes, all the silverware, this is probably about a little over a cup, maybe a cup and a third, plus what I spilled on the counter. Um, and then I just have to give a quick spray to the frying pan because basically all of the other dishes already rinsed it. Not only does it save on fresh water to, to wash dishes, but it also saves your holding tanks, right? So I'm not dumping a whole bunch of water down the sink. Um, and of course, I do wipe everything off before I start with a paper towel, usually the one that, you know, I've used as a napkin or one that I use to cook with. And so I've got a minimal amount of stuff that I'm really cleaning. And then when I'm all done, I'll wipe the sink out and that's it.